The Song of Hiawatha by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Section 6 Hiawatha's Friends Two good friends had Hiawatha, singled out from all the others, bound to him in closest union, and to whom he gave the right hand of his heart in joy and sorrow, Chibiabos the musician, and the very strong man, Kwasind. Straight between them ran the pathway, never grew the grass upon it, singing birds that utter falsehoods, storytellers, mischief-makers, found no eager ear to listen, could not breed ill-will between them, for they kept each other's counsel, spake with naked hearts together, pondering much and much contriving how the tribes of men might prosper. Most beloved by Hiawatha was the gentle Chibiabos, he the best of all musicians, he the sweetest of all singers. Beautiful and childlike was he, brave as man is, soft as woman, pliant as a wand of willow, stately as a deer with antlers. When he sang, the village listened, all the warriors gathered round him, all the women came to hear him. Now he stirred their souls to passion, now he melted them to pity. From the hollow reeds he fashioned flutes so musical and mellow that the brook, the Seboisha, ceased to murmur in the woodland, that the wood-birds ceased from singing, and the squirrel Ajidamo ceased his chatter in the oak-tree, and the rabbit, the Wabasso, sat upright to look and listen. Yes, the brook, the Seboisha, pausing, said, O oh, Chibiabos, teach my waves to flow in music, softly as your words in singing. Yes, the bluebird, the Owaisa, envious, said, O Chibiabos, teach me tones as wild and wayward, teach me songs as full of frenzy. Yes, the robin, the Opechi, joyous, said, O Chibiabos, teach me tones as sweet and tender, teach me songs as full of gladness. And the whippoorwill, Wawanaisa, sobbing, said, O Chibiabos, teach me tones as melancholy teach me songs as full of sadness all the many sounds of nature borrowed sweetness from his singing all the hearts of men were softened by the pathos of his music for he sang of peace and freedom sang of beauty love and longing sang of death and life undying in the islands of the blessed in the kingdom of ponema in the land of the hereafter very dear to Hiawatha was the gentle Chibiabos, he the best of all musicians, he the sweetest of all singers. For his gentleness he loved him, and the magic of his singing. Dear, too, unto Hiawatha was the very strong man Kwasind, he the strongest of all mortals, he the mightiest among many. For his very strength he loved him, for his strength allied to goodness. Idle in his youth was Kwasin, very listless, dull and dreamy, never played with other children, never fished, and never hunted. Not like other children was he, but they saw that much he fasted, much his manito entreated, much besought his guardian spirit. "'Lazy Kwasind,' said his mother, in my work you never help me. In the summer you are roaming idly in the fields and forests. In the winter you are cowering o'er the firebrands in the wigwam. In the coldest days of winter I must break the ice for fishing. With my nets you never help me. At the door my nets are hanging, dripping, freezing with the water. Go and wring them. Yena dize. Go and dry them in the sunshine. Slowly from the ashes Kwasind rose, but made no angry answer. From the lodge went forth in silence, took the nets that hung together, dripping, freezing at the doorway. Like a wisp of straw he wrung them, like a wisp of straw he broke them, could not wring them without breaking. Such the strength was in his fingers. "'Lazy Kwasind,' said his father, "'in the hunt you never help me. Every bow you touch is broken.' snapped asunder every arrow yet come with me to the forest you shall bring the hunting homeward 
down a narrow pass they wandered where a brooklet led them onward where the trail of deer and bison marked the soft mud on the margin till they found all further passage shut against them barred securely by the trunks of trees uprooted lying lengthwise lying crosswise and forbidding further passage we must go back said the old man o'er these logs we cannot clamber not a woodchuck could get through them not a squirrel clamber o'er them and straightway his pipe he lighted and sat down to smoke and ponder but before his pipe was finished lo the path was cleared before him all the trunks had quassined lifted to the right hand to the left hand shot the pine trees swift as arrows hurled the cedars light as lances lazy quassined said the young men as they sported in the meadow why stand idly looking at us leaning on the rock behind you come and wrestle with the others let us pitch the quoits together lazy quassined made no answer to their challenge made no answer only rose and slowly turning seized the huge rock in his fingers tore it from its deep foundation poised it in the air a moment pitched it sheer into the river sheer into the swift powwating where it still is seen in summer once as down that foaming river down the rapids of powwating kwasin sailed with his companions in the stream he saw a beaver saw armik the king of beavers struggling with the rushing currents rising sinking in the water without speaking without pausing kwasin leapt into the river plunged beneath the bubbling surface through the whirlpools chased the beaver followed him among the islands stayed so long beneath the water that his terrified companions cried alas good-bye to kwasind we shall never more see kwasind but he reappeared triumphant and upon his shining shoulders brought the beaver dead and dripping brought the king of all the beavers and these two as i have told you were the friends of hiawatha chibiabos the musician and the very strong man kwasind long they lived in peace together spake with naked hearts together pondering much and much contriving how the tribes of men might prosper end of section six